Speaking of future existence, is there advice you can give to future pockets of existences, aka young people, mm. uh, about life? You've had, uh, you've worn many hats. You've taken on some of the biggest problems in the universe. Is there advice you can give to young yeah. people about life, about career, about existing? <laughs> Um, maybe not about the last one. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people ask me this question about like, like working on such hard problems, like how can you make a successful career out of that? But I think for me, it couldn't be otherwise. Like I have to, to be fulfilled, you have to work on things you care about. And that's always kind of driven me. And that's been discipline department um, uh, and, and sort of superficial level problem independent because I'm, I, I started at community college actually, and I was taking a physics class and I learned about, uh, you know, magnetic monopoles and they, we didn't know if they existed in the universe and, but we could predict them and we could go look for them. And I was so deeply intrigued by this idea that we had this mathematical formula to go look for things. Um, and then I wanted to become a theoretical physicist because of that, but that actually wasn't my driving question. I think I realized my driving question is the nature of the correspondence between our minds and physical reality and what we are. And, that question is very deep, so you can work across a lot of fields doing that. But I think without that driving question, I never would have been able to do all the things that I've done. It's really the passion that drives it. And I, and usually when when students ask me these kind of questions, I I tell them like you have to find something you really care about working on because if if you don't really care about it, a you're not going to be your best at it, and b it's not going to be worth your time. Why would you spend your time working on something you're not interested in? So find um, the driving question. Like, yeah, find the driving question. Find your your passion. I mean, I think passion makes a huge difference in terms of creativity, talent, and potential, and also being able to tolerate all the hard things that come with any career or life. Yeah, I've, I've had a bunch of moments in my life where I've just been captivated by some beautiful phenomena. And I guess being rigorous about it and asking what is the question underlying this phenomenon, phenomena, like, robots bring a smile to my face and yeah, that's for cool. forming a question of like, why the hell is this so fascinating? Yeah, Why is this uh, specifically the human robot interaction question that something beautiful is brought to life when humans and robots interact, understanding that deeply? Yeah. It's like, okay, so this is gonna be my life work then. I don't know what the hell it is, but that that's what I wanna do. Interesting. And doing that, for, doing that for whatever the hell gives you that kind of feeling, I guess is the point. Yeah. Am I allowed to ask you a question? Sure. Okay. Um, on that point, because I like um, I had this colleague that suggests the idea that like consciousness might be contagious, and so interacting <laughs> with things, you know, it's that's an funny. It's no, a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting it, idea, yeah. right? So I'm I'm wondering, like, sort of, you know, the motivation there. Is it the motivation that you want more of the universe? to appreciate things the way we do and appreciate those interactions? Or is it really more the enjoyment of the human in those interactions? Like, is it, is it, I don't, do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah. See, I think consciousness is created in the interaction between yes. things. Yes, and I agree. I, so the joy is in the creation of consciousness. And I see. I really like the idea that it doesn't, just have to be two humans creating consciousness right. together. It could be humans and other entities. Yes. We, we talked offline about dogs and other pets yeah. and so on. There, there's a magic, I mean, I've been calling it love. It's, it's, right. it's this, this beauty of the human experience that's created. And it just feels like fascinating that you could do that with a robotic system. Right. And right. Be, uh, there's something really, powerful, at least to me, about engineering systems that allow you to create some of the magic of the human experience, because then you get to understand what it takes, at least get inklings of what yeah. it takes to uh, to, to create consciousness. Yes. And I, I don't get this, um, you know, philosophers get really upset about this idea that sort of the illusion of consciousness is consciousness. But I really like the idea of engineering systems that fool you into thinking they're conscious. Right. Because that's sufficient to create the magical experience. Right, because it's the interaction, yeah. It's the interaction, yeah. Right. And, and this is the Russian hat I wear, which is like, I think <laughs> I think there's an ocean of loneliness in the world. <laughs> I think we're deeply lonely. We're not 
even allowing ourselves to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think that's what love is between romantic love and friendship is two people kind of getting a little bit like, like uh, alleviating for a brief moment. That loneliness. That loneliness, but not, but we're not there. It's not the full aspect of that loneliness. Like we're desperately yeah. alone. We're desperately afraid of not existing. Right. I, th I have that kind of sense. And I just want to explore that ocean of loneliness more. Right. From an engineering perspective, like create a submarine that goes into the depth of that loneliness. So creating systems that can truly hear you. Right. Truly listen. Make the universe a less lonely place. Exactly.